was just while they were singing that song. You know, how can I help but praise Him? Yes. 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 We gotta praise the Lord. You really can't sing that song until you understand what God has done. Right. Yeah. 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 Not just an experience, not just an emotional experience, uh, not just uh, a sermon that touches your heart, you know, that convicts you and causes you to pray. Oh yeah. But when God absolutely and completely does a work inside of you. When that happens, there is no other person in this world that can take it from you. There is nobody in the world that can tell you that it didn't happen. There is no one in the world that could ever cause you to deny it. There is no one in the world that could remove it from you. Paul said this, you know, let me back up for a second. God's done so much for me. Yes. My life's not perfect. Amen. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. I don't have all things, you know, according to this world. But Paul said that in need or in plenty. I'm paraphrasing. He said whether he has a lot of food or little, whether he's poor or rich, whether this world accepts him or denies him, whether you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ or not, I am learning to be content with my God. In all things, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God can absolutely 100% transform your mind into a different direction that you thought you would never go. In John chapter 4, the woman at the well, we know the story. Yeah. Um, Jesus comes to this well, and apparently he sends his disciples to the town to get food. Now, if you imagine, there was probably one way in and one way out of this town, so this woman and his disciples had, must have passed by each other. She comes to the well and sees this man sitting there, and he asks her for a drink of water, which was completely taboo for the time for a man, a Jewish man, especially this be speaking to a Samaritan, a woman at that, right? Right. Yeah. And she, right. she, she, at, he asked her for a drink of water, and she, they, and they have this conversation, and she tells him, "What you don't have nothing to draw with," and, and he says, "If you knew me, you would, you would ask for the water that I have. It's living water, yes. Yes. and that you would never thirst no more." Right. And he, yeah. she, he, he told her, "Call your husband." I'm getting a little ahead, but anyways. You know the story. I don't want to just zoom through this. I want to achieve what God wants me to achieve here. Um, and I know we're very familiar with the story. So in the 39th verse, okay. See, when he had this interaction with, with when she had this interaction with Christ, he revealed himself to her. And when this happened, she saw something inside of her. She realized who she was dealing with, that he was the Christ. She, it's caused her to run to the city. It's caused an action in her life. She didn't just hold this thing inside of her. Okay, It caused an action. So she went to the city and she testified to many people of what, what happened to her at the well. This man that she met, this Christ, this promised coming king. Come on, man. And they believed based on her testimony, and they came to Christ. Now, when they came to Christ, Christ spoke to them, and they saw him. And then they said, they went to the woman, and they said, we believe not now. We don't just believe now because of what you said. We believe now because we've heard him ourselves. Whenever God does something for you in your heart, it causes a reaction. Oh, yes. Amen. And that reaction is not something that you just hold inside of yourself. No. It's not something that you want to keep inside or allow it to just, you know, hide that life. But she went off and testified of what 
God had done for her. She had. So in um, John chapter 9, this blind man, where, God, where Jesus healed the blind man, yes. he said, um, yes. they were, to, I'm sorry, I feel Bless like I'm Lord. missing it here. Absolutely no way to God until we understand exactly what Christ did. I'm not trying to imply that you don't, but there's just a light that just clicked on inside of me. And I'm trying to get this out of my heart because I want this thing, that same thing that happened to this woman, you know, happened yes. with me. Yes. Even though I was born in the church and yes. raised in the church. Come on, yes. But there was something that Hallelujah. absolutely 100% happened. Yes. And I just can't explain it. Come on. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. All right. We were lost in sin. Yes. I mean, to understand the condition that mankind is in right now without Christ, without the church, our focus has got to be, you know, on Christ. Yes. There's a lost and dying world out there. There is. And we've built walls, and I, I just, my heart is to take it out. Yes. I want to go out to the city and share what Christ has done. Amen. And I want to bring them in Amen. to meet Christ so that they can have an experience for themselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That through my experience, maybe one person could learn to have a, their own experience with Christ.
side. Yeah. Uh -huh. That no matter what I did or where I turned, I couldn't fill it. I tried filling it with a family. I tried filling it with working, trying to be successful in people's eyes. I tried to fill it with buying things, homes, a home, car, truck, boats. I tried to fill it with all these things. I tried to fill it with pride. I tried to run from it. I tried to, to do it myself. I tried to, um, now I've tried to come to church to please other people. I've tried to come to church to make my parents happy, uh, proud of me. I've tried to come to church to, to make my pastor proud of me. I've tried to come to church to make the elders of the church proud of me. And I just couldn't fill this spot that I had inside my heart. All right, come on. And I never could understand it. I couldn't understand it. All right. And then tragedy struck my life. And I faced the things that I did. My family broke. My mother died. Had surgery on my back. And became, okay, here it is. Okay. Thank you. See, there's somebody here tonight. There's somebody here tonight that needs to hear this. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. There's somebody here tonight that needs to hear this. Yes, right. See, when I was down and out, when I was so far down, I wanted somebody to still love me. Come on, brother. All right, come on. Come on, brother John. Come on. Whoever you are here tonight, you know what I'm saying. Yes. You know what I mean. I tried and tried and tried to fill it with pills and drugs. I tried, some of you may not know, I was shoving needles in my arms seven, eight times a day. So if you think I don't know where you're at, I know where you're at. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. I was so far into this drug habit that I had, and I'm just being open with you right now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any reason to hide it because God delivered me from it. Yeah. Yeah. taking Hallelujah. okay I was taking 8 to 10 30 milligram oxycodone in a needle at a time seven to eight times a day I've got the scars on my arm to prove it how in the world I thought to myself how in the world did I get here? Why? What happened? I tried and tried and tried to stop. But it was impossible. It completely controlled me. 100%. I hurt everybody that I know. Forget myself. I neglected my own children. My pastor. The ministry here, the whole church. I neglected everybody. But believe me, I did not know what to do. And no matter how much or how far I sunk, this emptiness was still here. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> it was still here. And I remember the night. Some of you may not know this, but I'm going to tell it anyways. 
I remember the night when I had sunk almost to the bottom. I was just about there to the bottom. I was in that motor, my dad's motor home. And let me add, my father tried to help me beyond measure. He reached out to me over and over and over and over again. But I didn't know how to help myself and no one could do it for me. Amen. That's right. But anyways, I, lit, I was in that motorhome. I was out of money. I was out of everything. I sold everything. I sold all the last things I could, I could find. And I had a little service call that I did, and I had a look, about four or five hundred bucks. And I just wanted to end it. So I decided to do that. So I went to Tractor Farm Supply, first of all. And I bought a veterinarian syringe, 22 gauge needle, large enough to hold what I planned on pumping in my veins. And I went <coughs> to the right people that I needed to go to. And I bought 12, uh, what they call on the street, Z-bars, Xanax, bars, two milligrams each, that's 24 milligrams of Xanax. If you know anything about Xanax, that's a lot. Two milligrams is a ton. I bought 10 uh, 30 milligram oxycodone, and I bought four 8 milligram Dilaudids, and I bought two bags of heroin, $20 bags. I did this. I went back to that trailer, and uh, I opened the drawer to get my tie off. And I saw my Bible under the table. And I got so mad at God. I mean, what is the stuff inside of me that it just would not leave me alone? hole that I just could not live So I grabbed the Bible out from under there and I threw it across. I remember throwing it across the room and I told God, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. So I mixed all that stuff up. And I managed to get that get that needle into my arm, into the right vein, and I put it all in there. Every bit of it. And I think, I estimate that I must have been out for like three or four days before I finally came to. And I remember waking up. And I remember being so angry that I couldn't even die right. I'm just being honest with you. Because you need to know, I'm sure there's things that go around you need to know from me. And whatever come that what may, you know, it, it doesn't matter. I woke, I woke up angry and the needle was still hanging out of my arm. And for whatever reason it was, the first person that came to mind was Brother Rhodes. So I called him. And I'm sure he remembers that morning I called him. Brother Don came too. That was a mess. I was a mess. Thank God that's all over now. Amen. 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 Another Amen. Praise God. But this led me to 
a point to where I had to make a decision. I was either at one point going to do what God has called me to do or not. And then not doesn't work out for me too good. So I have to do that which God has called me to do. And there is always hope. God, you have not gone too far. No one has gone too far where God cannot absolutely turn your life around and give you a reason to live. It's a lie from the enemy when you think that you're alone. It's a lie from the enemy when you feel like no one cares. It's a lie from the enemy when you think that no one loves you. I'm here to tell you, regardless of if you're looking for man's approval, it doesn't matter what man says, does, or thinks. God loves you. Amen. Jesus Christ loves you. Jesus Christ looked down. I think about now, I think about God who looked down and saw Joel Zonville in, in a mess. In a mess. Before I existed, he saw my mess. And he still said that I'm going to send my son to die for that man right there on the cross. Why? Because he loves me. And he did the same thing, not just for me, but for you. Whatever condition that your life might be in tonight, wherever, however separated you might feel from God tonight, however empty you might feel inside tonight, God still loves you, and he's waiting for you. His hand is still stretched out waiting for you, calling for you. He's wanting you to turn your life around. His, he wants to come inside of, inside of you and make not just, not just an emotional experience, but a life-changing transformation. He wants, to, he wants to renew the way you think and give you a reason to live. I stand here right now with nothing. I don't have anything. I have just a little bit of money that I earned last week, but my God, I have more peace in my heart now than I've ever had in my life. Because I have my eyes fixed on things that are unseen. Not things that are seen. Oh, right. See, things that are seen are temporary. Oh, yes. Things that are unseen are eternal. Amen. We look around and we get our eyes focused in the church. We can get our eyes focused on, on what the way we think it should be. The, what we think should be happening. And why is this person, why does, listen. That's not where our focus needs to be. That's right, man. That's right. Our trust is in God. Yeah. And whatever condition is going on, you're not in any, it may not be in a position to understand why somebody's making the decision. But my trust lies in God. Yeah. Yes. My faith lies in God. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I can't continue to allow myself to look at negative things. Because it doesn't profit anything. I have to continue to keep my eyes focused on the positive things of God. And that is the fact that I have salvation. And that no matter what happens to my life, I know God is in control of what things. I know that no matter where I go in this world, God is in control of all things. Whoever may turn around and try to look at me or look down on me or look down on you, God is still in control of all things. My life is in his hands. Completely, 100% in his hands. I am not seeking for my own will, Brother Marlowe. I'm not seeking for my own desire. I'm still a man and I'm not going to sit here and tell you I don't have desires. I do. But I check myself every day. I do. I check myself because my eyes have got to continue to be focused on what God wants me to do. Amen. Thank you. We've got to learn to place our trust in the Lord. Oh yeah. And not just not just a little uh, saying where I trust you, Lord. No. Accepting things for how they are. And trusting that absolutely 100% trusting that God is in control of all things. And that no matter how far you might go or how 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 you, you might feel like you've sunk there is a, a, a God that we turn to. Oh, yes. Amen. That when we turn to him, he still loves us. Oh, yes. And can Amen. forgive us yes. for all things. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes. 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 I hope that I feel like I um, didn't really get it tonight. Um, but I pray.
pray that somebody here can hear my testimony and make a decision tonight to change your life.